Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Ruben Kronick of Vineyard Time on Martha's Vineyard. And today I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about mechanical watches. When collectors first start out, there can be a little bit of confusion about what are mechanical watches, what are the different types of mechanisms, and what's best to collect. So I thought today I would give a brief overview about what mechanical watches are. Mechanical watches are one of the most sought after and collected historic categories of wristwatches. So what are they? Okay, mechanical watches are watches that are powered by a spring and run by a series of gears. They're regulated by a device known as an escapement. Think of the escapement as the part that keeps the heartbeat of the watch. It keeps it regulating, not too fast, not too slow. Think of the spring as the battery or the power cell. That spring releases energy that turns the gears, that turn the hands, that tell the time. Within mechanical watches, there's different types, and people often get confused about this. There's manual wind watches, there's perpetual watches, there's automatic watches, there's self-winding watches, and those different terms sometimes overwhelm newer collectors. So let's talk about what they are. A manual wind watch is a watch that winds through the crown. Typically the crown is at the three o'clock, although that can change a bit. And basically, when you go to wear the watch, you wind the crown to tighten the mainspring. Tightening the mainspring creates the power reserve to release into the watch to tell time. So what's an automatic watch? Well, this is where people really get confused. An automatic, a self-winding, a perpetual, they're all the same. And what they are is they're a mechanical manual wind watch with an added feature. They have a counterweight on the back of the watch. That counterweight rotates based on your motion. As it rotates, it tightens the mainspring, building a power reserve. So, automatic watches are basically manual wind watches that have an added way to wind the watch. Now, people get a little bit confused with automatic watches because they think all they have to do is take the watch off the table, put it on their wrist, shake it, and it starts running. And they're sort of right. They're right in the sense that the second hand starts to move. They're wrong in the sense that in order to get the power reserve built up to a suitable level, you really need to wind the watch before you put it on your wrist. So typically an automatic watch needs 800 to 1200 rotations per day of your rotor and the wrist in order to maintain a power reserve. So imagine how much you'd have to move your wrist to really build a power reserve. So if you just put the watch on your wrist and shake it, to start the watch running, your watch will always be fighting against the power reserve of building one up to a sufficient level where it can operate properly. You may notice if you're not somebody that winds your watch before you wear it and you just simply put it on your wrist and shake, that your watch doesn't quite run to manufacturer specs. It runs a little fast, it runs a little slow, it doesn't quite run right. A lot of times that can be attributed to the fact that it doesn't have a sufficient power reserve to be able to function properly. Now there's a few exceptions to what I'm saying. Seiko has some older watches that are an example of this where they don't wind through the crown and through the rotor. They only wind through the rotor. But as a general rule of thumb, automatic watches wind both through the crown and through the rotor. Now when I say wind it before you put it on, I specifically am talking about it if it's come to a complete stop. So different automatic watches have different power reserves. So do manual wind watches, but in the case of automatic watches, they typically have a two day or so power reserve. What that means is that if you're wearing the watch every single day, there is no need to wind the watch. The motion of your wrist will continue to keep the watch running optimally. But if you take that watch off to go on vacation for a week and then you come back, your watch will have stopped. There's nothing wrong. It just means you need to wind it to tighten up that spring so it has a power reserve to continue to operate. The spring's only so long, so the power reserve is only so great. So hopefully I've given a little bit of an overview about what mechanical watches are. Now, among mechanical watches, there's a lot of types, and we can save that for later. One last bit of confusion. Sometimes people get the term perpetual confused. In the case of an automatic watch, perpetual is discussing perpetual motion, i.e., automatic watches being as close to perpetual motion as the wristwatch sort of gets because it winds through your motion. But that's not to be confused with perpetual calendar watches. 
That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day, but that's a different variety of watch that tends to be widely collected and is a very sought after complication. Hopefully this little bit of information is helpful as a new collector. We really appreciate you tuning in. Please feel free to post any comments down below. We're happy to help you. And please hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for tuning in. We really appreciate your time.